Hey, I'm Clint Grove. How you doing? Do you want to be inspired to start your own business, compete in a competition, learn how to train right and eat right? Then this week's episode is for you. I spoke to George O'Farrell today about his victory in the USN Classic 2019 in the category for teenage men. This guy has started his own business at the age of just 18. With over 6,000 followers on Instagram, this guy is going big. We hear about his future plans to compete, how he started his own coaching business, and how he engages with his clients. So don't forget to subscribe for more videos, comment below, and enjoy this week's episode. Hello everyone, this week's episode is brought to you by our friends at Phoenix Fitness. Check out phoenix-fitness.com. Phoenix Fitness prides itself in helping normal people achieve their goals in the privacy of their own homes whilst providing value for money training accessories and cool items to make you look the part at gym. Hey yo, it's the Life Shot Podcast. Change your world and change the world. George, how are you doing? I'm good, you? Good seeing you out here. Yes, likewise. <laughs> so we had uh, Scudder Morsi on Cambridge. It's quite a nice day, actually. Very nice day. A lot nicer than last Tuesday. Oh, we've we've been having it. <laughs> so I, I I first met you at Pure Gym. Yes. Yeah. I, I saw you pushing some heavy weights. This was that was a long old while ago. It was. It was. Yeah, yeah. It was these massive big dumbbells, I guess. And you were like, <laughs> I was like, geez, this guy's strong, bro. And I went up to you and said, How old are you? And you're like, Oh, I'm 17. I was like, Jeez, Jeez so young. <laughs> <laughs> so first off. I want to know, I want to ask you, you know, what is motivating you at this point to do what you do? You're a young guy, just 18 years old, starting your, you've already got your own website, YouTube channel, podcast, you, you're coaching clients. What, what is it? What's driving you? What's going on? It's just, the, I always find the motivation to just better myself and then better other individuals. So I obviously started off just training myself with the motivation just to be better, be the best I could be. Just personally for yourself. Personally for myself. Yeah. And then once I sort of got fully into training and just really grew my passion from it and really, really started enjoying it and progressing. I then sort of swayed to how I could help others achieve the same thing. It must have been a little switch though. At what point was it like, okay, I'm doing this. Oh, oh, actually I can help others. Was there like a, yeah, a yeah, light bulb moment? Yeah, it was moment? definitely a light bulb moment. It was sort of when I was, when I sort of just before I started prep for my show, so sort of when I was in the in-between stage as to thinking whether I should prep for a show and then, um, at that point I was really really enjoying things and I thought I can progress myself why can't I help other clients so while you were in there training prepping for the show now tell the uh, listeners what that show was is this the USN Classic was yes it? So it was uh, USN <coughs> Classic UK DFBA uh, so the UK Drug Free Bodybuilding Association um, end of May mm -hmm. uh, 2019 that happened, 2019 yeah. yeah which was then the qualifier for British finals so this was a regional qualifier and British, qualify, British is the qualifier for Worlds okay. uh, in America. So yeah, I qualified for British, won my class, um, and then ever since then, I can't wait to get back on stage. <laughs> was it like an adrenaline rush, almost like a, a fix, or, oh, or, or was it? Absolutely amazing, because I lost, so I, I, I lost about 28 kilos in about 28 weeks. So it was a, a hell of a lot of weight to lose, and you always, it's a tough one, because mentally, it's, it's a hard position because you're, you're struggling to keep going mm. and at that point you're sort of questioning whether it's worthwhile but that minute when you step on stage when they call your name out and you step on stage and then you see all the audience because it was it was a fully booked show right. so there were a good a good thousand people that nothing can describe that it's amazing so you're all like <clears throat> oiled up tanned up yeah. walk out of there adrenaline rushing oh yeah yeah amazing <laughs> literally and then when when you go up against everyone in line doing yeah. your poses and yeah. then when they call you out I was just so happened I was the first person on stage okay um, and I was the first class of the day so it was nerve-wracking as well um, yeah it was amazing so l let's step back a little bit because um, you know you, you, you're still young and um, what it, in your in your childhood because I think you mentioned it in one in your one of your blogs where you said you just struggle a little bit with with weight or Definitely. something about your body as, as a young child so give us give us a last story yeah, yeah. You know, to, into this point yeah, yeah so I started off as a generic generic child and then I, I as most people do I got slightly overweight and with that then became not so much just just a couple comments every now and again from people at school um, 
and then from that that led to me thinking I need to do something about it and being this was years years ago being a lot less educated then as I am now mm -hmm. it just led to going sort of the other way and I and I not so much anorexic but sort of like the stages before that so you were training now, you would... And so I wasn't... No, you weren't. I wasn't okay. training initially, um, but then I did get into training at that point, and it was sort of that which, obviously, training doesn't really go hand in hand with not eating properly, yeah, yeah. Um, which then led to being in a bad position, then realising I had to do something about it, I really educated myself, got qualified in all the fields that I needed to So to what was others. driving you? Was it, was it the taunting, or was it not that bad? Is it, was it, it, that, that wasn't bad, that was just sort of, you know you know how you are when you're yeah. younger, everyone makes comments, yeah. um, but it was sort of me realising that I need to do something about it. And then the, the, the stage where I got to when I lost loads of weight, I, was, I really realised that something had to change, and when that flick switch, that mm. switch flicked, mm -hmm. that was when things properly changed. So, is there something, uh, have you got uh, brothers and sisters, or...? Got two brothers, one older, one younger. Are they are they quite like high achieving? Because I mean, just trying to find out where this yeah, yeah, this yeah. drive comes from. Well, yeah. So my parents always push us to to whatever field we want to go down. They'll obviously always support us yeah. and push us to do that. And and we all sort of whatever we want to achieve, we generally are quite determined to achieve that. Basically. So yeah. it's, if you, you see something, you want to go. I want to do it. that. I will go go and do that. Yeah. 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 Because I think it does take, um, to, to succeed in something, you need to say, all oh, right, I'm doing this and I'm going to do it uh, until, I, until I get somewhere. But whereas a lot of people might do something, do something, oh, it's not getting anywhere, change paths, do something, do yeah, something, yeah, change yeah. paths. I'm quite committed in saying that <clears throat> if I say to someone that I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. Like when I did my show, I made sure that I told everyone so that I was held accountable to it. I put it out on social media so that I was accountable. I told my friends so I was accountable to it. And so I did it. <laughs> yeah. so, so, so being um, in your position now, you, you're in Cambridge, you started your own coaching business. Yeah. Go do coaching. You, go coaching, yeah, yeah. you got the apparel <laughs> and everything. Yeah, of course. So cool. um, how do you find it? Is, it? is it like a lonely business or do you find a lot of um, people around that you can draw support from? And yeah, huge, you... hugely, hugely supportive because yeah. I do face-to-face -face sessions, so one-to-one, -one, some group sessions, some online. Mm. Um, so I've got sort of hands in many pies as you say mm. um so a lot of the one-to-one -one is uh, it's just so happened that the the individuals that i work with it's they're they're all amazing individuals and it's amazing sort of having that support and building that network up and training people like that because it just keeps my motivation high keeps their motivation high mm. and everyone's just sort of accountable it's a really really nice circle so you you must have the question must have gone in your head should i do university or should i just start my own business did that go through your head ever yeah so it's sort of, I feel like it's sort of at a stage when you're going through education, it's sort of the thing to do. Mm. You do GCSEs, you do your A-levels, you do your um, university and you progress forward from there. And I, I reached the point where I was questioning to go to university, but then I thought equally, I want to start this. And I'd already built up sort of an online, not so much a fully online business. I had online clients coaching people online. And that was the step that I really found that I really, really enjoyed this. So you got a taste and of I this got, little... Yeah, and I, and I was getting good results with my clients. Yeah. Um, so I took that leap and I set up Go Coaching. That's quite bold. Yeah, it is. I it say. is. <laughs> That'd be pretty bad. So um, I, was, I was reading in one of your blogs where you spoke about your preparation for this show yeah. that you were in and how you learnt a little bit about yourself um, in those moments, did you, did you have some dark moments mentally? Did you have to push through? What did you actually oh, learn about yourself? Massively. It's a, I feel a lot of people, competition prep, they, they sort of jump into it too sort of quickly. Mm. It's, especially social media, like who doesn't like looking shredded? You get more likes on your pictures, get more engagement on your photos. Um, but it is a lot harder than that. You, on social media, you don't see anyone putting in the hours behind. like And training when food's got quite low is mentally very very tough so that's when you're on a low amount of calories yeah yeah because inevitably to lose body fat you have to drop your calories you have to do more cardio so you have to sort of mm. alter that energy balance um and with that just sort of comes just comes tiredness and mentally it's quite hard to keep on pushing forwards it's got to be tough so I mean, did, did you sleep okay? I mean, I'm thinking if you don't, you don't have a full stomach. Exactly. <laughs> How does that affect your sleep? Exactly. You you get to the point, especially 
a lot nearer the competition where food's obviously less. Food's yeah. in theory the lowest it's been in s at least just before the last week where last week you slowly push food up. Um, but yeah, sleep does suffer mm. somewhat. And you do all you can to help that you manage your stress, you get into a routine, supplementation if needed, but mm. inevitably it does happen. So, like, did you have to tell yourself, you know, George, this is why we're doing it? And, and what was the answer to yourself? Like, hey, come on, let's, let's go. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm quite lucky in that, like I was saying earlier, the, the individuals that I have around me is quite a good sort of community to be a part. Like, my family's all really pushing me forward. The clients that I work with, it's all really motivating. And sort of when you have a network like that, one thing I'd say is if you're going to do a competition prep, you need to have a very close circle and a good support network. Support network, yeah. yeah even, even if it's just dieting down, so a general population weight loss client or even someone trying to build muscle, you, you still need to adhere to a plan, you need to be consistent and with that you need a support network. So going alone is not an option really? It really? is an option but it will be a lot tougher yeah. and, and you have to be prepared that you will get to a point where you need someone just to speak to and mm. a different set of eyes to say look at your progress pictures and just be like you're looking really good mm. keep on pushing forwards or be honest and be like you need to lose more body fat so that's the advantage of having a coach right and that's the advantage of probably... yeah massively having the advantage of having a coach and just having someone that can give you a different set of eyes be honest with yourself because inevitably we all in theory don't always be honest with ourselves that's just life mm. and sometimes you might think you look a lot better than you do you might think you look a lot worse than you actually do but just having that set of eyes or someone that can tell you you need to alter this yeah yeah so you you've got a you started a podcast recently yourself yes um what's it who's your target audience though so if you read the so on the description of the podcast it's j the the main sort of topic is just helping people live a healthier lifestyle a better lifestyle where they can enjoy their lifestyle more mm -hmm. they can get more out of it they can have better performance better mindset mm. just feel generally healthier so let's talk about nutrition now because i think you're quite interested in, in yeah, that yeah as well as what i am and i'm no expert but uh, you know trying to get some information how did you where did you gain your your knowledge are you still learning and where you're learning from the, the amazing thing about my career and and generally a lot of careers is you can never know enough mm. there's al always new research coming out there's always new studies coming out and and the thing that i feel not everyone does which they should is they should constantly strive to keep on learning so do you think it's about almost behavioral change and, and, and habits a, yeah a, it's a, a lot comes down to habits and um it just takes time and, and making negative habits into positive habits mm. and just these small lifestyle changes like generally for a client who hasn't had any experience tracking foods before I won't get them to track foods initially we'll just look at sort of what they generally eat now mm. and what they could swap these out for which mm. could be slightly better changes change their routine up slightly um, yes I'll give them structured training and then over time this will progress to then having calories and then um, calories and macros and then we're just looking at really yeah so um, struct positive habits and then calories and macros and then from that going on to just sort of getting more nitty-gritty with things and seeing different placements of foods throughout the day nutrient timing and it's also up to their body type maybe or at least how they react to certain definitely foods. and it's such a individual topic which I, I, I don't think enough people sort of realize um, and it just takes a lot of time to learn about them and alter things from there is it, is it tough for some clients? Like, let's say some clients come to you, they start, they, this is too hard for me. Or do you kind of like really like guide them through? I really, really guide, guide them through it. So it's yeah. a really, really close sort of relationship guiding them through it. And at the end of the day, if they're finding it really tough, that's my job to make it less tough for them. Inevitably, it is a tough process, mm. but it's my job to make it as easy a process for them as possible and make them as confident as they can throughout. You better, otherwise you're going to lose some clients, right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. So it's That's a, my job. So it's just like um, making them feel um, comfortable around you, making Definitely. them feel loved. Definitely. Um, At the end of the day, yeah. I don't know if you saw on my social media, I put a, a post the other day and, and 
of, of course there's all training plans, nutrition plans, but at the end of the day, what sort of coaching stems from is building a relationship okay. and just working closely with that client. Yeah. Like a handful of my clients who I've been working with for a long, long period of time, um, they've become some of my best mates. Yeah. And uh, obviously all my clients, they're, they're, I'm really good mates with them, I get along with them, um, and the longer you work with someone, the more you get to know them. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So that's that long-term relationship, that's really good. So. For your for yourself now, what's what's your plans? I mean, are you are you thinking about doing another competition? Yes. So, the thing with competition prep is obviously it has a huge toll on your body. Mm -hmm. um, up until so a good couple months after I actually competed was then that I actually felt better in myself. It took a huge toll on me uh, mentally, physically from a hormonal perspective it screws up all your hormones um, so it takes time to get back into the swing of things so I want to have a good couple of years out two years three years out okay. um, and then prep for another show and that that just sort of be to test the waters again um, and and just just see sort of the improvements that I've made because it takes time to make improvements and you have to gain body fat you have to be in a surplus to grow mm. um, and then down the line when I sort of I'm at the upper age of junior category. That's when I want to really, really go for it and try and get to Worlds. World, world champ. Yeah, that's well. the plan. Natural pro card. And, and so do you think that the payoff is, is worth it in, in that, it's not, you know, we know it's not good for our bodies, but do you think the body can recover enough just to justify going through that? That's the thing. And that's, that's what I've been speaking to a lot with sort of people in my circle who, who I just speak to quite frequently. Mm. And it's, it's sort of, yes, it might not be the best thing, um, but like we spoke about earlier, nothing can compare to that time when you're on stage. Okay. It's just incredible. So that's worth it? In my <laughs> eyes, yes. In other eyes, people's, people looking in, they yeah. probably wouldn't, wouldn't think the same, but for me, 100%. Yeah. No, I think there's, this, there's something to be said about accomplishments, like I'm going for this and I want to achieve it, and it's really just you and yourself saying, I've, I've set this goal, I'm going to achieve it. And when you do, that's your personal um, benefit or the personal, the feeling you get from that is like, wow, I've done it. Yeah. And, and that's, that's good. So yeah, I want to put myself through some physical challenges as soon as my collarbones. Sorted. Sorted, yeah. Yeah. But, um, get back out on the bike You know, one, well. one thing though, and I've told you that when I was your age, I was pushing 100 kgs on the bench press, right? Yeah. You, sent, then, me, you sent me the comparison. Yeah, yeah. I was like, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, um, and, when, and I've been going to the, that gym that you that you go to, or you, what we met there, the, the Pure Gym. And <clears throat> even after two years of training, I can only get to 70 kgs. Yeah. So I'm like, well, okay, I'm older now, I know that. But I wonder if there's something to be said, like, do, is it possible? I'm, I'm sure it's possible for me to get back up there. Definitely. But should I try and get back up there? I want to, I'm just thinking... It, it, it again stems from your goals and yeah. it being an individual topic it's sort of where do your goals like like we were speaking about earlier sort of yeah. you're really you're really interested in sort of breathing and sort of that endurance aspect mm. um, but for me obviously then mine yeah definitely it sort of stems from just trying to be your better self doesn't it yeah because yeah. I'm sure in, in your training you like you just dumbbell pressed no, 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 40, 50 kg on each side. You're like, yeah, next week I'm going to do 45 or something like that, right? It's always got to progress. <laughs> always got to press. And it's progressing. It's nice being out of the dieting from my show and actually having food there yeah. to progress. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then you can really use the energy that you need. So, all right. So we, we've, we've spoken about nutrition and I think that is an important aspect, obviously, for you, for you and your clients. Massively. Um, how do you... <clears throat> like mentally for your clients? I mean, let's say they, they, they're struggling like, oh, George, I just can't do this anymore. Yeah. You know, how, do you, how do you push them through? What do you, what do you say to them? <clears throat> it, it's sort of, so I, I, I work with some sort of general population clients in that their goals being just weight loss, generally fitter, mm. getting some muscle, mm. um, quote unquote, toning up. Mm -hmm. um, but equally, I, I work with a couple of people who goals are really bodybuilding based, powerlifting based, and it's sort of just really, really reiterating the point as to why you started, what was the reasoning you started to be better, and that generally gets them back being motivated. And, and again, if it doesn't, and it's too difficult, then that comes down to my part, adjusting the plan, 
tailoring yeah. it a little bit more for them. So it's about the why and also about the goal, right? So it's... Yeah. Okay. Why and the how. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So George, is there anything that um, this kind of like you've been trying yourself personally, but you haven't really, uh, you know, mentioned it to your, your clients just yet because maybe you think it's a bit weird and wacky and a bit out there. Is there something like that that, you've, um, that you want to do in the future? It's <laughs> <laughs> a good question. Good question. What I, what I think not enough people sort of do, I, I know I don't do it enough. <clears throat> lifestyle gets in the way, work gets in the way, you're busy. But spending enough time sort of sort of self-gratification being thankful for what you have and seeing what you need to progress to like there's a couple techniques um there's a couple apps you can do it so meditation wise mm -hmm. and then um there's a technique called grounding so where every morning you just step out in the sunlight okay um ideally uh no shoes on your feet so just being on the grass um and and uh, in reality being as bare as possible being as naked as possible out in the cold elements if so be so if it's ideally in the sun because yeah. you get just that exposure and, and generally work-wise a lot of us a lot of individuals just spend a lot of times inside mm. they don't get that sunlight exposure mm. so so then that's interesting because I, I like the idea of not just working out physically but also in a way spiritually because your connection the grounding is almost like a connection back to the earth massively and there's yeah. there's lots and lots of research out at the minute which is and obviously more continuing coming out which is just so positive and it's just amazing sort of research like that and that, that sort of stuff really interests me because it means i can then go the extra mile with my clients and give them extra information in regards to topics like so, that so because that's so let's just sum up again so it's about the gratitude and that's, that could be in any form or shape, like journaling maybe? Yeah, journaling. Um, what I really want to get into is uh, having a whiteboard and then you have three points. Mm. You write three points that you're uh, grateful of and then three points that you want to improve on. Yeah. And then you, you and th nothing beats um, at the end of the day, just ticking something off, wiping something off and, and being grateful that you've achieved it and it's almost like um i listened to this guy joe dispenza and i mentioned him a few times on the show because he's, he's my go-to guy about um, being grateful for something that happens in the future yeah that you haven't yet achieved but you are thankful for it happening so yeah. that you can generate those feelings of it of that joy of getting that uh goal or getting that thing that you want and it's yeah. like it's, it's the aspect of imagining you doing something like Mm. me imagining stepping on stage and winning the the competition imagining as a client imagining reaching your goals and mm. sort of helping them to imagine that is generally if you can imagine yourself doing it it will happen okay so this is so so if i understand you correctly it's not something that you necessarily talk with your clients about now but you might think as a as a, as a whole holistic view of of the client's journey you might yeah, yeah. start to introduce some aspects, aspects of, of, of meditation thankfulness Massively, yeah, because yeah. like, like I was saying earlier, you can never know enough mm. um, and it's a topic that really, really interests me and I want to really, really go into depth in regards to that in a little bit more detail so that then mm. I can give more information in regards to that with my clients because that mental aspect and being able to mentally be in a better situation is just hugely, hugely yeah. sort of prominent. George, it's been great having you on the show. Thanks um, for having me. Yeah, no problem. And, you know, your, your achievement is, is a great achievement being... Uh, the, the USN Classic uh, Teenage Men Champion, number one spot. UKTF, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and we'll, I want to put a nice uh, little picture on the description then, a link to that, it's going to be awesome, just to see um, you know, what you've achieved. So I think it's, it's been really good. <clears throat> so you being, uh, you know, you've achieved a lot in, in a shorter space of time, and you've, you've really chosen your career path already in a way. I mean, you, you, you're full on with this coaching thing. Definitely. You committed with it, it seemed like so amped about it. So other people out there, there's young people who maybe, what's your advice for them, for, the, for, for people in the same place as you? Well, I always were. think, I listened to a, a, quite a good podcast a little while back and it was talking about, you don't want to be that person when later on in life you're lying there wishing that you did stuff mm -hmm. years ago. So it's just sort of thinking about that and consciously thinking, do you want to be that person? Is that, is that a matter of taking a risk almost? Like, I want to do this, but I don't know how I'm going to make money from this. Massively, and just taking that, taking that step, and at the end of the day, the the impact it has on people, and sort of improving their lifestyle. And when you see 
week on week, session on session, day after day, them improving, mm-hmm. it's just all so worthwhile. Yeah. All right, so, so young people, get out there, take a risk. Do it. Follow, it your, follow your dreams. And do it. There you go. <laughs> Don't be scared. Uh, I think the problem is, hey, Dad, I'm not going to university. You'd be like, what? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. All right, George, it's been great having you on the show. Likewise. All right.